Hey campers, Georgia, back in the man cave. Remember this guy? The buckskin pouch I made for my care pot. Well, I had some left over. I didn't want to waste it because it was kind of important to Will. It was from his mom. Somebody said beads. So I put some beads on it. But I still had leather left over. Huh. Can't let that go to waste. So here's what I did. Let's check it out. So here I was just, I had some thoughts in my head about uh, what the bag should kind of sort of look like, what I'm going to need, that sort of thing. I had to plan it because of the leather that I had left was bits and pieces. Here you can see I've put the backing on. I just glued it with some uh, leather glue just to hold it while I worked with it. It really helps when you're sewing pieces together and things like that. So I had it all marked out and now I'm just punching out the sewing holes. I had to go all the way around the whole edge, just cleaned it up, burnt off the ends and all that good stuff. You've all seen that before. Then, you know, when I sew and things like that, for a while I kind of have to step away <laughs> so I decided this was a good time just to cut up the the pieces of leather that I had for the dangly bits on the bottom and look at some of the stuff I'll be adding to it I needed to fix up that uh, the little toggle I was going to use it was a little big on one side not so uh, balanced so I grabbed one of my modded opinals, uh, actually the uh, cotton sample. I didn't think it would work. It actually worked as a, a whittler. Not very well, but it did the job. But then I needed to get a little bit more delicate with it. So I went to my tadpole and that cleaned it up. Got a strip of leather, wrapped it around and I, I sewed it on there really tight onto the toggle and left two little legs which I was going to use to sew onto the actual uh, possibles pouch. So there it is cleaned up and a little bit more even. Here you can see I'm just getting it, trying to get the right size. Looking at the danglers, trying to get them sorted out. How am I going to do it? Landed up gluing them on underneath there so that when I sewed it on it sewed them all together there you can see I've sewed the uh, the front on um, uh, I wasn't really happy with it but you know it worked uh, I should have did the inside out thing and I'll explain that later you can see I was uh, looking at my punch there and one of the the legs was bent. I never realized that and had to straighten it. Don't know where that happened. So back at it again, hammering. And you know, remember when you do that, if you want to keep your lines reasonably straight, you want to overlap when you hammer. And then we're off to the races again, sewing. Uh, one of the problems I had is if you look uh, to the side there, I was running out of chocolate colored uh, the the actual oh you can see what I'm doing there um, I was getting really low on that cord so I decided to do the saddle stitch but do one brown one red which kind of matched up to the whole design thing I had in mind and you know that little rising sun thing because I didn't think I had enough <laughs> to do the whole thing in chocolate. Uh, here I'm redoing that cord thing again. The piece I had, uh, I didn't like. And you can see I just, I actually punched a hole through the middle and then uh, went through and around on the sides to make it hold into that piece. 
burnt the ends off, burnt my fingers again. <laughs> I never learn on that one. So now I'm, I'm just uh, trying to figure out how I'm going to do this. I, I needed to line them up. I needed to make sure that the flap wasn't pulled tight down on it. I had to make sure that it had enough room for the sides when you flip it over. And uh, cut in there so that I could push those leather straps through. And then split them inside and just tack them in. I, had to, I didn't want to make the hole too big. I wanted it to be a tight fit. Uh, didn't want the hole showing up. So there you can see I have it down. And then uh, I tacked the, the little flaps uh, out on either side just to hold it in there. Then I had to find the point where I needed to cut so that you could pull the toggle through. Started off by making a small cut, really nervous. I didn't want to make the cut too big. And of course, these when you cut these things, they tend to stretch a bit. So I wanted to make sure it was a tight fit. There it is there. Fairly straightforward. Nothing fancy. You can see the tack box there. Now I'm just flipping around looking at it thinking about what I want to do I get into these problems where I play with things and I look over and over and I flip through I look at it and I go you know what's missing what have I forgotten does it look right you can hear me talking to myself and now I'm thinking about that design how much bigger do I want it to be and where do I want to put it? Struggling with that. Uh, so I went and I decided I remembered I needed to have. Yeah. Got to have them things to hold that on. Put over your shoulder. It's no good just being a pouch. And it's not going on a belt or anything, so I needed to have uh, the straps on there. And it took me a while to figure out the pieces of leather that I had left. I kind of pulled them out, got some strips, made sure they were long enough, just clamped it together like you see. Here I put, the, you can see I put the beads on. I just wanted to show that. Now I wanted to make sure that the pieces I had were actually wide enough. They, uh, I decided on just over an inch would be enough. And after dealing with that, uh, stepped away again and back to painting. Just wanted to make sure that it was as close as I could get it uh, to look the same. The, the, the chocolate color I'm using there literally was empty. There was just enough in the bottom to finish this piece off. Didn't plan very well, unfortunately. <laughs> Didn't realize I was so low on that. And there you can put this, I put the sun on with the little things and there you can see it together there. It was close, not exactly the same, but close enough. Back to those straps. Now, I did the same thing again. You can see I've glued them to each other. And what I wanted to do, I wanted to make sure that the joints were strong and wouldn't flex. So I decided I was actually going to put a little square stitch in there. You'll see what I'm talking about. Make a square. What I'm doing now is cutting them down to the size I want. This leather was really, really hard to cut. It's so soft that it tends to stretch when you cut it. I even put a new blade on it. It really helped a lot, but I still struggled trying to cut it. It was really difficult, uh, something that I had to get used to and be really careful about uh, when I'm cutting it. There you can see they glued together, and I'm going to punch the holes and basically make a little box out of the stitching. 
just to give it a little bit more strength. It was, you know, you don't know how much you're going to have in your pouch there. And if it's too heavy, it might just pull the stitching apart. So I kind of doubled up on it. And here we go again. Stitching. You can see what I mean by the little box thing. And I burnt my finger again. I never learned. And it felt really strong. I was surprised. Um, sorry. Mary is now standing in front of my microphone and sniffing it. So you probably can hear that. She's moved off again. <laughs> Just checking the stitching, stitched it together. Same thing, did the box stitch again. And uh, you can see it there. Testing the strength in it, making sure it's not going to fall apart. Actually read up on how low they carried it. And they actually wanted it fairly low. Nothing in it, but hey, uh, we'll fix that. Then I thought I've still, I need to do more. And I read up about what they actually carried in their possibles pouches. And there were a couple of things and I was thinking, I've got leather left over. I want to use it. Let me make a little pouch knife, make a, a little utility knife for him, her, whoever was going to use this. These two knives were actually old kitchen knives I found threw them in a drawer. I don't throw anything away that's sharp and shiny. So decided on the bigger one. The tang on that little one was kind of weird. I've never seen that before. This one seemed to fit the bill. Because it was such a small pouch I was making, I needed to reinforce where the blade, the sharp blade edge was going to be in the pouch. Otherwise, it would just eventually slice through the stitching and uh, the leather. So I got a thicker piece of leather and just cut out the shape of the blade where it's going to sit in the pouch. Glued it on there. You can see me lining it up here. You would normally do this with a really a big knife where you're using heavy leather and you want to preserve that the pouch. You don't want it cutting into your stitching and stuff like that. So now, because I've got a knife, I didn't want to just put a, a regular handle on and leave the knife the way it was. It needed to be more handmade kind of knife. Would be something that he would have made for himself to use uh, for camp duties kitchen duties, that sort of thing, light duty stuff. So I decided to slice this thing in half so that I could have the tang in there. And here I'm just lining everything up. See how I wanted it. Because uh, I didn't just want to glue it. Uh, Nervous about just using glue, the handle might fall apart if you start battening or something with it, or you drop it. So I wanted to put pins in it, uh, just to secure it a little bit better than just glue. And I have these pins. Wasn't sure if they're going to be long enough or short enough or whatever. So what I did was I drilled one side, then put them together and drilled through to kind of sort of get it straight. Like I said, kind of, sort of. And then, same thing on the other side, using good old elbow grease. Making sure everything lines up now, the way I want it. And then marking it out, because, as you can see here, I just used a, a chisel and just gouged it out a little bit. So that the blade would sit in there and there wouldn't be a gap. That was the theory anyway. Yeah, sometimes it works, sometimes not so much. The uh, pins were wouldn't fit through the, uh, the tang, so I had to just make the holes a little bit bigger, get it to fit. I wanted it snug in there, so 
Got a good, nice, snug fit in there. Now I'm making sure it's all going to go together in one piece before we start gluing things and all that good stuff. One thing I should have done, and normally I would do this, is work on the blade before putting that handle. I didn't, I just was on a roll. <laughs> Got some JB Weld, mixed it up. Love that stuff, it dries really hard. It's pretty strong. Um, learned that from making walking sticks. And just put some in on the wood, both sides, on the steel. Put it together and just put some clamps on. To leave it overnight and here I am the next morning hoping that it stayed together <laughs> like I said kind of sorta there was still a bit of a gap there but it was in there nice and tight and I have my basic knife and handle so now I wanted to even out the handles because when I cut it in half I wasn't dead center so I just wanted to make sure that it was a little closer to center on the, the handle, which means, yep, sandpapering it down on one side to get it about the same as the other. And there you can see it there. See the gap there? I'm gonna have to fill that gap. Now I started to work on the blade. I wanted to make sure that the blade didn't look like a modern day kitchen knife blade. So I decided my favorite blade style is a drop point. So we'll work on that. Then I wanted to get rid of that kitchen knife look where it has it. Uh, you know, you can actually see where the sharpened blade is. You can still see it slightly there, but it's not as obvious. I'll work on that a little bit more just to make it a little, little bit more handmade-ish. And uh, he has that pouch. I glued it together and put the little dangly bits on. I was They were too wide. So I cut them all in half to make them a little bit smaller. Cut off the excess down there behind it. Made sure the knife fit in the pouch before I sew anything together. Had to get it so that it went all the way into that into that protective piece, and then did the fold over there. You can see the protective piece I'd put in there, and back at it again, hammering holes and sewing. I uh, got a little bit bored, so I thought I'd try something different, try a different pattern. So I just looped it around the edge and then went back and did uh, a saddle stitch to make like a square boxy thing on it. It was just a test. Uh, not very neat, but I wanted it to look handmade, so which when I do things is pretty obvious. Now to fill that gap again using magic dust. I use this Elmer's glue. It's not the regular one. This is a you have to look at it. It's a, actually a glue everything. Elmer's glue. And I can tell you it dries as hard as a rock and it dries clear. So anything you put with it will show up. So I just put the dust on there, fill it in. And while that kind of set, I got to work on the blade again. I'm using about a thousand grit, a uh, thousand grain or whatever they call it, grit here and just going back and forth on it, just trying to get rid of those little edges and everything that made it look like a kitchen knife. Then, of course, sharpening it. I had to reshape the whole blade. So I started off with coarse and really gave it a good grind. <laughs> Not what you should do. You should be a lot more lighter. Then I went to a lighter grit and then I just touched it up with the, the ceramic rod. And hopefully it would be kind of sort of sharp. My sharpening skills, well, lacy lace giggles. 
But you know what? Cut a piece of paper. Good enough for me. Right? If it'll cut the paper, it'll do for a kitchen knife. So that worked. Now I'm just putting the pins in. Getting them in there nice and snug. And there you have it. Now, uh, uh, because this is a kitchen knife, eatery knife, you don't want to use just like any sort of oil. I, I'm using a, a food safe oil on the, to bring the, the wood out a little bit. I really like this wood. I wish I knew what it was. Um, it's, a, it's a very nice wood. But it, like I said, it was an old hammer handle that I cut up. And there you are. Kitchen knife. Now I've got to put something on it. So I didn't want to do that same pattern again. Uh, I just decided to make it, cut myself. <laughs> yeah, that was actually a paper cut. That started to bleed. Uh, I actually cut myself. Uh, with the paper. Um, my walkabout pouch is over there and in my walkabout pouch I always have a first aid kit with a lot of band-aids in it I play with sharp and shinies you need that so I just made this random sunshine thing so there you are I uh, managed to use probably about 90% of the leather which was really nice and I appreciate Will giving me that uh, to do with what I want. So, you know, like I said, here is the Kepard pouch. I added, I just went and bought some wooden beads. Um, I didn't want to do bead work. Not ready for that yet. But I thought, just keep it nice and simple. Added some beads down there. As you saw, here is the Possibles pouch. Whoops. Put my button back so you can see it just like that. And as you saw, the back here, this is different leather. I just couldn't find enough room left on the buckskin uh, that didn't have holes in it or anything like that. I had to work around the holes in the buckskin. So I decided to put this backing on, which kind of helps it keep it a little formed. And as you saw, I put sides on it. I wanted to have a little bit of bulk. I don't think they did that. They just sewed it together and it was kind of like a bulging thing. And I thought that would be kind of uncomfortable. So to have this, just to keep it a little straighter, I'll put some dangly bits on them and put some beads on there. You can see that. Then I, I realized, huh, i got to have a strap for it. Well, you know, I went through and sorted through what I had left. And as, as you saw, I just stitched a couple of pieces together and added it to the pouch then i did some more research you know i i added the the same the same picture i wanted these to be at least close to make it like a, a little complete kit still had leather leather left over so i went online and did some reading up and i thought i wonder what they put in those pouches and by the way they referred to them as possibles pouches pouches that we carry when you're out trudging around the outdoors, you should have a possible's pouch and we keep all our survival stuff and things, fire making kits and that sort of thing in a possible's pouch. And I didn't know where the name came from. And I, I believe that's, they just called this a possible's pouch. You know, I made the little thingy there. Uh, he would have probably have used a button. <laughs> I didn't want to. I didn't have a button. So I made this. I found this piece of wood and I, I made a basic shape for it when I was showing you uh, a knife the other day. And so I brought it back and I attached it yeah, just with some leather. And then I thought, what do they carry in the possibles pouch? And I read up about that. And they would have things like fire starter, food stuff, utensils for food. So I had carved this while at the winter symposium. And what I did was I just darkened it a bit right now. I went over and just burnt the edges and wiped it down to give it a bit of a bite so you can see the carving a little bit better. You can see it there. He has a spoon for mixing his food or whatnot. And I thought, what else do they have in there? And I thought, well, he's a food guy. He wants food things. 
and I had this, this blade was an old kitchen knife that I had that they handled it broken. I never threw it away. I threw it in the drawer yeah, and I found it and I thought, huh, maybe I can modify it a bit to look at, make it look a little bit old and handmade. And I had this piece of wood, which was from an old hammer. So I cut that off, cleaned it up, put it on Yeah, You can see I put uh, pins through. I did glue it and everything like that. Kept it very plain. Kind of changed the shape a bit. Uh, try to get rid of the obvious kitchen knife look just to make it look a little bit raw. And this would be his, his eating knife, food prep and things like that. And I thought it would need a pouch. And I found some more leather and put this little pouch together. Very basic little pouch. There it is there. You can see just a, basically a slip uh, with some leather flappy things on the back there and just put a little sunshine there. Uh, reading a little bit more was they used to trade a lot. These these mountain men would trade with the local natives, the Indians. They would have carry in their possibles pouch another little pouch that they'd keep things, trinkets or things like that, that they could trade with the Indians for stuff that they needed. So I made a little pouch and just prettied it up. It would be his pouch. And I know that they did a lot of bead trading, so I threw some beads in here. You can hear them in there. Something I tried, I wanted to try out. If you look at the stitching, you can't really see it. I turned the bag inside out, stitched it, and then turned it back around just to see how it would work. It works pretty well. It really gives you a nice finish to the pouch. You don't see any stitching on it. Put this uh, leather string through and put some beads on it just to hold it closed. So there you go. I finally got through most of the leather. What was left, couldn't think of anything I could make with it. So, you know, here's a, a basic possibles pouch with his uh, his main knife. You know, this, this basically was my first attempt at bug skin. It was a learning experience. This leather is unbelievable. It is so soft and yet so strong. Uh, you can't tear this stuff. I struggled to cut it. Uh, unbelievable how well it works. And I can understand why they made all their clothes out of buckskin. Uh, it just makes sense. It's so strong, comfortable. You'd make a jacket out of it. They'd make a big jacket out of it. And so really uh, a good learning experience. Don't forget, like, share, subscribe. <laughs> you know the story. Pretty sure I'm going to be back. I've got other things I'm working on now. A couple of little projects that I, I want to get going. Uh, I want to do another Oppenal mod. I got myself two Oppenal 9s. And I, um, I don't know whether to modify the two 9s or make one out of two. Yeah. Uh, having worked on this, put something in my head, came up and I thought well, that would be a good idea. So I think I'm going to do that. Uh, that'll be coming up. So there you go. Possible's pouch for them mountain men. Great project. Uh, it took a long time to do it. It took me a while to do it. I kind of worked on it now and again while doing other stuff, which reminds me, uh, you know, the knife doctor ambushed me on a live feed, <laughs> challenged me to an EDC pocket dump. And I was actually working on this at the time and got the alert. And so I looked at his video and I was like, oh, <laughs> I need to make a video quickly. And then I realized he wanted a live feed on it, something I'd never done before. But I got to tell you, the joy. That was fun. And it was so nice to see all you guys jump on and chat, ask questions and that sort of thing. I think I want to do that again. I'm not going to do that much. I, I'm still learning how it all works and everything. But it was fun. If I do it, then you guys can actually ask questions, talk about things and you know, even talk amongst yourself. Got to get rid of the spam, guys. I, I figured that out. I'll find a moderator and somebody who could just get rid of the spam stuff while I'm dealing with you guys because it's really distracting. What do you do? You will be safe out there, especially with sharp and shinies. You know the story. Actually, with anything. You saw that actually was an old cut. When I say old, it's a couple of hours old. Um, I actually cut myself with paper. <laughs>
And I, I put a Band-Aid on because I, I, my medications, I bleed easily. Little did I realize it started bleeding again. So there you go. Fortunately, I have my first aid kit in my, my possibles pouch that I carry with me. Might want to think about something like that. Just saying. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon. Bye.